If you bank with uh, ABSA, you'll want to pay close attention to this next conversation. This week, the banking giant confirming that it was hit by a data leak. The banking group says the leak was limited in nature and involved what it terms the unlawful leaking of client information by an employee. Uh, it doesn't matter the size. This is still of concern to customers. Sandro Bocchianeri is the group's chief risk officer and joins me now on Wednesday lunchtime. Good afternoon to you and welcome. First of all, have you established how this has happened? And you're also calling it a leak and not a breach. Why? Good afternoon, Jeremy. Thank you for, thank you for having me. First of all, we want to offer our apologies to our customers you know, for, for this uh, incident it goes completely against the culture of our organization and we hold the integrity of customers data with the utmost care but you know, due to this incident um, an employee leaked this information uh, a, a employee which we trusted um, who had access to this information um, as part of their day job uh, leaked this information to an external platform and ultimately sold it on to a limited number of third parties. And that's why we're calling it a leak because we have had no system compromise, which typically relates to a breach. All right. Um, at what level was this employee operating? Do we know why the information was leaked? And uh, what has happened to that employee? So uh, as we are currently going through an ongoing investigation, I can't share too much detail, but what I can share is that this employee was one of our, our credit analysts who has access to uh, risk modeling um, um, systems. And with that information, they were, it was sold to, on, uh, to third parties uh, who, who would then potentially use that information to commit fraud. Um, in terms of um, what has happened to this employee, this, the employee has uh, consequently been suspended. Uh, pending further investigation, we have also raised uh, broad criminal charges against this employee, and that's going through the courts right now, and that's currently where we stand. How, uh, what type of information are, are we, we talking about, and how many of your customers would have been potentially compromised? So the, the type of information is essentially names and surnames, ID numbers, uh, bank account, mobile contact numbers, etc. Those kind of de uh, details were shared. It's a very small fraction of our, our retail customer base in South Africa. It's about 2% of our retail customer base here in South Africa. Um, and, and that's currently wh what we have uh, that we can share. So 2% would be uh, a, a, certainly a, a couple of thousand accounts, wouldn't it? That's roughly about 200,000 uh, customers that are affected by this leak, yes. And what did you do immediately? I understand that uh, you were forced to secure uh, court orders. Yes, so we've uh, suspended the employer was the first thing that we've done, brought the criminal charges against the employee, uh, obtained the necessary court orders for the search and seizure operations that we needed to conduct for at the third party um, locations. Um, we have just subsequently destroyed the leaked data. Uh, the external party devices has gone through an independent forensic review uh, and we are currently in the court process right now to obtain the files for our own investigations uh, and then we may also bring charges against those third parties uh, who has had access to this data. In terms of what we've done on our systems, we've implemented heightened monitoring on all our customers that are affected in this instance to make sure that uh, our fraud prevention mechanisms are up to the task. Uh, we have informed our customers of this leak as what was broke yesterday. Uh, and then we're also provi uh, providing our awareness advice to our customers on how they can safeguard their accounts. What type of third parties are we referring to? Right now, I can't unfortunately share that information, but it's, it's just third parties from a marketing type perspective who, who's looking for that kind of information to potentially on uh, sell services uh, or try to commit uh, fraud on these accounts. How long did this happen for or how long did it take before you were alerted? Uh, so we were alerted of this on the 20th of October sorry the 27th of October um, and we then informed the information regulator uh, immediately uh, and we were conducting our investigations the only reason we came to uh, alert our customers yesterday because we were going through the court process and we did not want to jeopardize the investigation that was going on but we've implemented all the controls to safeguard our customers accounts immediately once we found out about this leak 
if I am a customer and I'm concerned and I suspect something, what must I do? Uh, you should have received, if you are affected, you should have received an email or an SMS informing you of this leak. Uh, you can please you know, review your bank statements, look at any kind of suspicious transactions that you, you may see on there. If you are suspicious, please reach out to our fraud line. Uh, you can either email us at fraud at apps.africa or you can contact the fraud hotline on 0860 557 557 uh, and one of the agents will be able to help you. Um, but to, to reiterate, no customer PIN codes or passwords have been compromised during this process. Uh, it would also, and this is a final question to you, suggest to me that maybe you also need to vet your credit analysts or people who have access to that information a little bit more carefully. No, agree. No, we are reviewing all our processes. The individual did go through the relevant checks at the time of employment, uh, but we are reviewing all our processes to ensure that we are locking those kind of um, details down as best we can. All right. The APSA Group Chief Risk Officer, Sandro Bucconetti, thank you very much for joining us. Just a little after half past the hour.